Hey, how y'all doing? Today, it's another episode of Notable FMC Prisons in the Inmates Carswell, of Occupy, which is the United States Federal Prison. That prison subscribe button. Button. And also, female inmates. inmates at that. And another thing. All security levels. You know I've noticed Prior, about these female prisons with special yo, medical and mental crazy, health crazy needs. crazy, crazy crime, bro. Federal and Bureau of Prisons, a division of the, of the feds. Um, the facility also has a prison camp for mental security female inmates. As of April 20, 2020, 1,600 women were confined at Carswell. The facility is located in the northeast corner of a Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base, Fort Worth, known as the Carswell Air Force Base. So, let me tell you a little something about this place, y'all. FMC Carswell is a fully accredited by the Joint Commission of Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations and American Correctional Association is the only medical facility for women in the Federal Bureau, Bureau of Prisons. The main five-story building has a capacity of 600 prisoners. The minimum security prisons, prisoners live in the barracks outside of the main compound. Although most inmates at this facility have some form of medical condition requiring treatment, there is also a general population of inmates at FMC Carswell who do not. Carswell housed the last woman who was under a federal death row sentence, Lisa Marie Montgomery. If this woman doesn't look crazy, I don't know what does, like what is. You know, have any of you all ever watched anime? You seen Death Note? You know, Ryuk, he looks crazy. This woman looks terrifying. But peep game. She murdered a young pregnant woman and then cut the woman's unborn fetus from her womb. Montgomery was scheduled to be executed via lethal injection December 8, 2020. However, this was rescheduled for January 12, 2021. As her attorneys contracted COVID-19, she was convicted on January 13, 2021. And you know what they said? They said... We don't give a damn about your attorneys getting COVID. This, they have nothing to do with you. Okay, bet. Okay, you go home, you go sleep for the night. We'll see you tomorrow. Get your lighter ready. Man. They, they, they definitely torched her ass. They cooked her, seasoned her, baked her, man. They whipping the wrists. Oh, man. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So, um, oh, so, so here's some more notable stuff. Maybe y'all might have heard about some articles criticizing FMC cars will have appeared in various media outlets relating to various forms of prisoner abuse. These articles focused on allegations of medical malpractice, neglect and sexual abuse of inmates by staff over a seven year period. Seven FMC Carswell staff members were convicted of sexual abuse of a prisoner. In March of 2000, a correction officer at FMC Carswell, Michael Lawrence Miller, oh man, he R-worded a prisoner. The prisoner did not report the incident after it occurred, but kept a pair of sweatpants she wore during the incident as proof. As she was being released in September 2000, she gave the sweatpants to a prison administrator. Implicated by this evidence, Miller was convicted and in 04, he was sentenced to 150 months, 12 years, and 6 months imprisonment. He served out his sentence at FCI Sandstone and was released March 19, 2015. Oh, yeah. They lightweight cooked his ass. They could have cooked him a, l- a lot more. That's that's scummy. That's super scummy. Like, that dude is, like, very scummy. Next up. Okay. So, we have... Um, Angela Johnson. She was convicted in 05 for her role in aiding her then boyfriend Dustin to commit four drug related homicides. Hawkins was sentenced to death and was executed on July 17th, 2020. Um, uh, the Department of Justice announced it would seek another death sentence, but she was resentenced to life in prison. Johnson is currently being held at FCI. Wasika. And then Lisa Scummy Marie Montgomery. <laughs> you can't tell me that doesn't rob good. Lisa Scummy Marie Montgomery. Say that 10 times. Lisa Scummy Marie Montgomery. Uh, convicted in 07 of murdering Bobby Joe Stennett, age 23, and kidnapping her unborn 
from her womb in 04. Montgomery was transferred to USP Terra Hardy and was scheduled to be executed. Lethal ejection, December 8th, but it happened January 12, 21. Well, it was supposed to happen 2021, but, you know, her lawyer got sick. Um, and, uh, anyway, she was, she, they, they, uh, they, uh, on, uh, January 13th at approximately 1.31 a.m. Yep. I would love to say, uh, RIP to Bobby Joe Stennett and, you know, uh, prayers sent to you and your family, Queen. Next we have... Lynn Stewart, disbarred civil rights attorney convicted in 05 of providing materials to support a terrorist conspiracy for assisting her incarcerated client, Omar Abdul Rahman, to communicate with his followers in a violation of special administrative measures prohibiting it. She was released on compassionate grounds in December 2013 due to terminal cancer. She died March 7, 2017. Dang. So she essentially like knew that her day was coming regardless. And I guess she was like, well, maybe that dude probably paid her a whole lot of money. And she's like, whatever, I'm going to do it. Give it to my family. I don't know. It's very interesting, though. It's very, very, uh, very, very interesting. Got to take a hit to that one. Next, Wanda Barzi. Since uh, pled guilty to kidnapping and unlawful transportation of a minor in connection with the abduction of Elizabeth Smart, Barzi, then husband Brian David Mitchell, was sentenced to life. And uh, Wanda Barzi served a 15 year sentence, released in April of 2018. <sighs> Lynette Fromay. Follower of incarcerated cult leader Charles Manson, convicted in 1975 of attempting to assassinate U.S. President Gerald Ford in Sacramento, California, on September 5, 1975, and released from custody in 09 after serving 34 years. Marion Jones Member of the U.S. Olympic track and field team during the 2000 Summer Olympics, pled guilty in 2007 to lying federal investigators about her use of performance-enhancing drugs during athletic events. Released from custody in 08 after serving five months. Um, Aurora Vasquez Rijos, Marcia Vasquez Rijos. So apparently they were sisters, and they were convicted in 2018 for murdering Aria's estranged husband, Adam Joel Anhang Uster in 05. Those are some very exotic names. You know what I'm saying? Like names that aren't common to me are like exotic. Like, you know, it's like it's something different. Her reality winner? Reality winner. That that's that's her name. Reality winner was sentenced on August 23rd. 2018 to five years and three months in prison for releasing top secret documents exposing Russian attempted interference in the U.S. 2016 presidential election, thereby violating the Espionage Act. She was released on June 2nd, 2021, and transferred as part of a plea deal to treat bulimia. <sighs> Hands down the most unique name I've ever seen in my life. Reality lay lay, lay winner. <laughs> Reality lay winner. Like that is the coolest name I've ever seen on here. Ever. Rita Gluzman. On April 30th, 97, Gluzman was sentenced to life in prison after being convicted on a federal charge of interstate domestic violence for killing her husband. After sentencing, Gluzman appealed her sentence, claiming her conviction was unconstitutional and her appeal was denied. Released on compassionate release in July 20 due to severe medical issue, including multiple strokes and diagnosis of early Parkinson's degree disease. Next up, we have Shannon Richardson, former actress who pled, pled guilty to sending letters containing rice into 
Obama and Mayor of New York Bloomberg in 2013 as part of her plea deal. She was ultimately convicted of possessing and producing a biological toxin and was sentenced to 18 years in prison and a 360 band fine. Richardson had sent the letters in an attempt to frame her estranged husband before her conviction. Richardson was a small part actress who appeared in a television show, Vampire Diaries and The Walking Dead. She also was a mother of six children. On March 16, 2015, the investigation Discovery Channel aired 10 of seasons of the television show Who the Bleep Did I Marry, which featured Shannon Richardson's case. As told by her ex-husband, the episode was titled Poison Love. Whoa, damn. Next we have Emma Coronel Aspiro. I tried my best, y'all. And she is the wife of El Chapo, charged with importing drugs into the United States. She's serving a three-year sentence. She's actually going to be released this year. And I am just going to say that. I'm not going to say nothing else about, you know, this woman. Yep. You know, we're going to keep pushing. Next, Kristen Gilbert. Former nurse at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Massachusetts, convicted of murder in 01 for deliberating injecting four patients with fatal doses of the heart stimulant amphetamine in 95 and 96, and she's serving a life sentence. A life sentence. <sighs> Damn. Anna Montez. Former senior analyst for the Defense Intelligence Agency, pled guilty to espionage in 02 for passing classified information to Cuban intelligence over a 16 year period, including the identities of four U.S. spies. Damn, they chipped her ass off for a good 25 years. And she's actually released. And this year she got released. Damn, that's crazy. Next we have Marius Mixon, Mason. Member of Radical Clandestine Environmentalist Group, Earth Liberation Front, pled guilty in 2008 to conspiracy and arson for committing a 1999 arson attack at Michigan State University Ag Agriculture Hall that caused $1 million in damage. Marius Mason is one of the first transgender individuals to be diagnosed with gender disability and given hormone treatment with testosterone. He was sentenced to 21 years and 10 months. Plans are set to move Mason from the from the female prison to the men's prison later throughout his transition. Um, next we have Aifa Sadiqi, Pakistani neuroscientist convicted in 2010 of attempting to murder U.S. soldiers and FBI agents. Let me just stop. You went to school to be a neuroscientist, which probably takes 35 years and you're out here doing this? You are a crazy lady. And FBI agents while in custody at a police station in Afghanistan after she was arrested on suspicion of being an Al-Qaeda operative. Damn, someone got a crazy, crazy mouthpiece. They got in her, in Shawty's head, and fucking, woo. Damn. Whoever convinced her, bro, whoever did that could talk a bee out of its stinger, like on everything. Like, how do you convince a neuroscientist to do some crazy stuff like this? She's serving an 86 year sentence, scheduled for release in 2082. Yo, she'll be like 104 years old or some crazy stuff. I don't know. Dang, that's crazy. Doris Cisneros, sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Cisneros and one of her clients, Daniel Garza, were responsible for the murder of Joey Fisher. Next, we have Elizabeth Kimmel, pled guilty to connection of the Varsity Blues scandal. Served a six-week sentence, released on February uh, 18th. And last, the woman that's seen in the thumbnail with um, El Chapo's wife, um, Michelle Hebron, a.k.a. Michelle Hell and BG, age 25, of uh, Anna Annapolis, Maryland, she was sentenced to 30 years in prison, followed by five years of supervised release for, for participating in racketeering conspiracy throughout the 
TTP Bloods, the Treetop Piru Bloods, which engaged in narcotics trafficking rob and robbery. Hebron pled guilty to that offense on the second day of her trial. And that concludes this episode of Notable Inmates and the Prisons That Occupy Them. Uh, hit that subscribe button, like, let me know something in the comments. I appreciate y'all for watching. And uh, yeah, that's it. Lights, players.